Don't get a master's in computer science. Listen, you know the drill. Please like, please subscribe. If you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, leave a comment down below. I want to hear what you have to say. And you're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Now, if you want to work in a field like education or research, or you want to work in something really specialized like sonic waveform chamfer analysis, then yeah, get a master's degree in computer science, maybe even go for a PhD. But for most of you out there who are trying to get jobs at these small to medium-sized software companies, a master's degree isn't going to help you. It might actually even hurt you. But if you live in the US, Canada, South America, or certain countries in Africa and the Middle East, you might want to listen to what I say. So let's take a look at the career path of two computer science graduates from a reasonably good school. Okay, we're going to start out with two graduates, Posh Ryan and Masters Ryan. And they both graduated from the University of Maryland, and they're both roughly $30,000 in debt. Now, Posh Ryan starts interviewing right after he graduates, and he gets a job at Crap Tech, which is an okay software firm in the Maryland area. It's a local firm, and he's making $75,000 a year. Not great, but it's something, and he can start paying off a student loan. But Masters Ryan thinks, maybe I should get a master's. I'll make more money. So Masters Ryan gets another loan for $30,000 just to go back to school and get his master's degree. So a year goes by. Let's see where they are. Okay, well, Posh Ryan now has his debt down to $26,000 because he's been paying it every month. Uh, his salary is up to $76,000. He he got a 2% raise. Not great, but better than nothing. Meanwhile, Masters Ryan is now in even more debt. He has the original $30,000 in debt. He has the $2,000 of interest on his original $30,000 in debt. And he has an additional $30,000 in debt for his master's program. And he still has no job. Okay, so let's go a year into the future. And for the past year, Posh Ryan's been working on Docker and AWS and Blazor and C Sharp. And meanwhile, Masters Ryan, he's doing whatever his professor wants him to do. Okay, a year passes by. Now, Posh Ryan's debt is at $22,000 because he's been paying his debt off. He'll have this, his, he'll have his college debt paid off pretty soon. His salary is now at $85,000. Why? Because he got a new job at Supertech. So for the past two years, Posh Ryan has been accumulating real-world experience with real-world technologies, and he's very valuable to potential employers. So he might be able to come in as a higher-end junior developer or even a low-end mid-level developer. Masters Ryan, well, he graduates from his master's program. Now he's $66,000 in debt, and he still has no job. But Masters Ryan is more employable, right? I mean, honestly, not really. You're going to still come in as a junior developer, and you're competing with all the other junior developers that have two years of experience. So unless the company you're applying to has a very specific niche product that you happen to do your thesis in and you're recognized as a subject matter expert in that field, the master's degree really isn't going to help you starting out. What you'll find is a lot of conversations that go like this. Uh, I'm really looking for somebody who knows AWS. Do, do you have any AWS experience? Well, my master's thesis was on a collection of scalar and vector-based data for mathematography and irregular chamfer domains. But do you know AWS? There aren't a lot of companies that are going to hire you because you have potential. They want to know what you can do for them now. So for the average programmer, getting a master's right after college just isn't worth it. But I do want to show you this. This is a career progression chart where you started a junior developer, you go up to a mid-level developer, and then usually around mid-level you have a choice of becoming a senior developer or maybe going into a team lead position. Now this is where having a master's degree might start to matter because if you're applying for an internal team lead position, it could make you more attractive for that particular candidacy. And if you're applying to a senior dev position, this is where you start to see senior dev want to add, say, master's degree preferred or master's degree required. So once you become a mid-level developer, take a look into doing part-time master's degree programs, especially if your company offers to pay for some or all of it. And if your company is willing to pay for this and you like working at your company and want to stay for a while, this is the best of all possible worlds and it saves you on a lot of debt. Now, there's one more reason why I want you to wait. A master's degree in computer science may not be that helpful depending on what you decide you like to do. 
in my case, my master's degree is in engineering management. And that happened because I became a team lead and I went, wow, I really like managing engineers and I'm actually pretty good at it. So I like the management side of the house more than I like the technical side of the house. And I got a master's degree to help me become an even better manager. Once you become that mid-level developer, now you know what you like to do, what you don't like to do, and what you're good at. So maybe that next master's degree won't be in computer science. Maybe it'll be in cybersecurity, or maybe it'll be in AI and machine learning, or maybe it'll even be a project management professional certification so you can become a technical project manager. But if you get that computer science master's degree right out of college, not only are you putting yourself two years behind everyone, but you might be getting a master's in something you don't even like to do. So do yourself a favor, don't get yourself a master's degree right out of college. And good luck on your next interview.